Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on this homemade Volkswagen powered tractor I picked up a couple of weeks ago. We actually got two videos under our belt on it, and the first one was kind of giving an assessment on it. Had a huge oil leak. We ended up taking the transmission out of it, getting the flywheel off, doing the rear main seal. On uh, the second video, we put the transmission and everything back together, gave it a run, and uh, found that everything was working okay. Got the ti back tires spinning, went through the gears, saw how fast it's going to be in third gear. It's kind of scary looking. Uh, so that's where we are today, and we need to address, uh, we have no brakes. We have a fuel system that needs to be go through. The charging system's not working. I think the tire on the right rear goes flat, and whatever else we find uh, with that. So without further ado, let's get into it, get some wrenching done, and hopefully this will be the last one on it. So I kind of want to jump on the charging system real quick, but one thing I do see right off the bat is one of the fuses that are up in here is blown. So let's go yank that out of there. I have a feeling that's probably for the lights and not the charging system. Let's just go change that out real fast. We actually could probably steal the one from over next to it because there's nothing wired to it. Let's go take that, put it there. And I know the headlights weren't working. They're still not working. <laughs> All right, let's... um. Turn the key on. Yeah, that's what it was. That was for the headlights. All right, so we got that cured. Let's uh, look into the charging system. I'm gonna go fire it up real quick and make sure that charge light still does stay on. We still have to go through the fuel system, so that's not taken care of. Let's go give her some choke and a little bit of throttle. So the charge light is still on, so that is still an issue for the charging system. So there's a way to uh, test the generator by itself, and that is by back feeding it power, and it should spin like an electric motor. But to be able to do that, we've got to get the belts out of our way, because it, it, it spins, but it's very light. So this is a kind of odd setup, because normally a Volkswagen just has this belt. This one has another pump running off of it so we got to get the both of them off of there looks like if we can loosen that up we should get some adjustment and uh be able to take this one off and then there's shims in the middle on this one that we should be able to take apart and get the bottom one off i kind of want to change that belt anyway so you can wiggle a 9 16 in there i don't know if we have to loosen the bottom one up do we get yeah yeah we gotta get one more We ain't getting to that one easy. <laughs> uh, there's another one here. I don't think that's going to... That looks like it's just fixed. This looks like it's the slide. There's one further in. Let's go try that. I don't think it's it. All this stuff is homemade, so I'm not quite sure what is connected to what. Let's see if that's anything for us. No. I got to get a, a, a ground down wrench to get back, to get the other one back here into my stash of ground down wrenches. That should get us in there. Hopefully it slides. There we go. All right. One off. So on a regular Volkswagen setup, there's shims to adjust the tension. This generator does not adjust like that pump did. So you gotta take shims out and Put them from side to side, but to get to them, you normally take a part like this. Let's go see how that homemade pulley was put on there. Just throw that anywhere. That's what we get. Yeah, it's like fun to get those shims in there. Looks like they welded it. I don't know. I don't know if that was welded right around there or if that's like maybe one that had an AC or something. They took a pulley off a... Looks too good to be homemade, right? All right. Anyway, we're going to go throw this back on there real quick. And just to maintain whatever shims were on what side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to back feed it power. All right, now they got all that off of there. So we're gonna get these wires right off the generator. And we need to ground, I'm gonna use the jumper pack right there. We're gonna ground 
the body of it as normal ground would be. The regular battery's been disconnected out of the circuit. We're gonna take a jumper lead, we're gonna run hot to the battery out, and then we're gonna ground the field wire on the, on the generator, and that should spin it like an electric motor. Let's see what we get. All right, let's go. Just up a ground and I got two red wires of course <laughs> we'll take the bright red one we'll call that the hot and we're gonna take the dirty red one and we'll call that one the ground so hook the ground up to that one and we'll connect that to the ground on the jumper pack or anywhere it doesn't really matter and then with the hot lead, if we touch the other one, it should spin like an electric motor. There we go. You don't want to do it long, but showing that it is functioning. So I believe our generator is okay. We'll probably have a problem with the voltage regulator. It's also a way to flash the system too. Sometimes when they sit for a real long time, they lose polarity. I don't think that's gonna be an issue now with that. I'm gonna put her back together again one last time without the uh, pump running on it. We'll just put this belt on and we'll see what we get. Nope, still on. There's the voltage regular you got mounted underneath the dash. So it's got, this is the heavy wire going to the generator, which would be the B plus or battery. And then it goes kind of through the regulator out to the other side which is going to be connected to the battery and or connected to the ignition switch. This little green wire is gonna go up to the dummy light up top, telling that it's not working. And then on the other side, you can't see it. There's a blue wire, that's the field wire going to the generator to tell the generator to put more out or less out accordingly. And uh, I have a feeling that we're gonna take this off. There's gonna be like a, uh, a winding going around that's probably gonna be broke on it. So it looks like we got two stainless bolts to take out, we'll drop this down and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Without further ado, get all that out of the way and we disconnect the battery first. <laughs> yeah, I should be able to wiggle that out now. The bolts are off. There we go. Let's go take a peek. It's kind of cobwebby. A lot of times you'll get a break right on that somewhere. Let's go look underneath the, on the bench. I didn't see any actual breaks in the underside of it. I'm not saying that it's not bad, but you want to see what's inside one? Let's go, there's potting material here and there should be a screw underneath it. Let's get a wire wheel, grind it out of the way and we'll take the top off. I believe there's a set of contacts in there that can go bad too. Watch your eyes. There we go. Yeah. Two relays and they have contacts on them. A little set of points. And they should flex like that. Get drawn in, turned on and off, and the same on the other side. Straightened out. Yeah, so we're looking. Mag energize and bring those contacts across to help the turn on and off. I don't see any really cooked areas. I'm looking for like burnt windings. Again, those contacts could be no good too. And you got another set right here. I don't know if the lighting is going to be good enough. There you go. Yeah, they're looking a little, a little on the cooked side too, huh? I'm going to go upstairs and see what I got. And uh, we'll just replace it up in the stash. I don't see any of these are any good, neither. One of these should be right, right? That's an aftermarket one. I guess we could just wing it. Which one do you want to try? That one's never been opened. I don't know if it's six volt, though. It looks like it. I believe they say somewhere on it. Yeah, that might be right there. 
All right, let me go hunt. See what I have. It looks like, what is this one? New in the box. It's probably the old one that I took out. Knowing me, it's probably not a new one in the box. Ooh. Prove me wrong, will you? Again, as long as it's 12 volt. Might not even matter. Yeah, let's go try that one. 12 volt. There you go. I get that thrown up underneath there. Let's give her a spin and see if it goes out. Yeah, my bet is probably if we took those contacts that were in that old regulator and cleaned them, it would probably work. Not positive of that, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. I think the contacts just got too over corroded and they're just not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Either that or we, you know, you could have burned out one of the windings, not allowing the relay to pull in. Hard to say. But charging system's fixed. <laughs> All right, what well, you want to jump on next? Uh, probably the next important thing would be either fuel system or brakes. Maybe, um, Fuel system kind of stinks up the place when we get into that and got to run it. So let's go maybe jump on the brakes and see what we got going on over here. So I got two master cylinders, uh, one a single and one a double, one that's kind of like what it is, but you see all the plugs that are on it. None of this is being used. These are used for the brake light switches and brake lights, brake lines going out. This only has one line going out to the two rear circuits. So uh, let's unbolt that and We'll eyeball the two other master cylinders I got and we'll see. I, I think the other one is shorter, so this line we'd have to make a new one. I don't know. Let's get this out of here. Yeah, so we get that brake line to crack loose without a line wrench. And I am not thinking so. Yeah, let me grab a line wrench. <laughs> line wrench is just a wrench, it kind of goes around further, but still has an opening to go over the line. Let's try it like that. I'm going to shoot some lube right there. I could probably get rid of this wrench. Just because it makes it a little easier to work around it. Let's get these two out. He made his own bolts. It's like the, if it comes out, I'll, I'll show you. It's like he welded the, a nut on a rod. Good place for a ratchet. It's kind of like he welded the, he thought he ground off at the head of it. It looks, it looks welded to me though, huh? Yes, no? Let's get the other one. Yeah, they're homemade. I should be able to pop out of there. What are the chances are you think that was still good? <laughs> Not very. Uh, let's go eyeball the other new master cylinders to it. All right, so we have, this should be the same. It looks like it, right? And then we got a single, which is much simpler, but the only thing is maybe we'll just have to make a new lineup to go fit there. I think the, Ass end is the same, bolt pattern is the same. I don't think there's any difference there. I'll pop it in real quick. We'll just eyeball it. Maybe we'll go with this, kind of simple, simplify it a little bit. And uh, we still have to come up with a reservoir scenario. I think they had like a, uh, 
it was like a oil can or some kind of can was up here feeding it. I don't know what I have for any kind of reservoir. We'll have to probably make that too. All right, we'll make sure that bolts up. I'm pretty sure it does. And we'll go from there. Yeah, it's got that wiggles down in there. Yeah, I think that'll be just fine. Even better, we need to come up with a reservoir and a longer line. I, I grabbed two lines out of my stash. That one should do it. And let's see what I can find. I'm gonna bolt this up and uh, see what we can come up with for a reservoir. So that's a rod that pushes in on the center of it. And that's gonna need to have what's called free play. Let's get that boot up further. The free play is so that the master cylinder internals come all the way back. So there's a plunger inside of here that you're pushing down and it pushes fluid out that side. Well, the plunger has to come all the way back to allow fluid to fill the chamber back up. And that needs, again, free play. Like we, on a previous video, we talked about the clutch having the same scenario, but you kind of need the same for a master cylinder. So it has to go to where it touches. And then it, now it's pushing that plunger inside, but you need that little bit of free play. And there's an adjustment here. I'm not quite sure how this is going to line up for us. Let's uh, feed that through. Let the pedal go up. And see where we end up. And we should have, see that little bit of click? As long as we have that, we'll be okay. Again, that's not quite in place, but that should be good. If not, we'll, we'll tweak it a little bit here. I gotta go get those other plugs out of that master cylinder, plug off all the other spots that it can come out, except for, we'll probably use that top one again. Digging those old fittings out, cleaning them up. They're actually brake line fittings too that he uh, plug welded on the back side. Trying to bolt it up. And there's that. <laughs> there's no threads in it. I don't know if that's just a screw up or did the singles come with no threads? Hmm. So I guess that's what happens if you pay 19 bucks on eBay. Here's the one we're looking at. No threads. There's another one I had in my stash. Threads. Same thing. Just I think they finished, they for, uh, forgot part of the process. I don't know if I can just put through bolts on it. I may try and tap that. Hey, you want to try quick and dirty? Yes, yes we are. Problem is it? It's cast too. It's not um regular steel. Bar hole. No problem. Fixed, I tell you. I just gonna bend herself up a line for that. Eh, I think we're just gonna eyeball it. That height. You can, um, 67, I think, was the first year for dual, dual circuits or dual chamber master cylinder. Try not to kink it. Not good. A little lower, huh? Um, that's gonna be close. The, uh, let's flip it around. Try that again. We need. 
the bend right uh, there. And you could take an early car and just put a later master cylinder in it. You just have to normally, I think it was the front was like right wheel, left wheel, and then this one just went out a single brake line to the rear. You just have to break that up and, and put it on the other on the other uh, holes. And what that gives you, because what happens, the problem with this system is if you get one hole in a brake line or some something somewhere, the um, whole system loses pressure. You have no brakes. Hence, that's where it was called an emergency brake instead of a handbrake, because in case of emergency, that's what you used. <laughs> I think we're going to end up bending it out this way. You're going to be too long. Um, yeah, so... I lost my train of thought. Why does it look like it doesn't want to fit down in there? Why does that feel weird? <laughs> we don't have enough depth to catch threads. What's that? One? That's because that's got a different fitting on it. Well, there you go. That's why it won't work. So we're going to have to cut it, flare it, and put this fitting on it to go in there. I don't know if you guys can see the difference. So it, they went from um, European to, it looks like an American coupler here. Well, actually they would have because this, this rear end is, uh, who knows, like an early American Ford or something. All right, so we got to do some chopping and make that style and one stays that style. Who'd have thunk? One step forward, two steps back. So I was getting ready to go cut that other odd fitting off of that line. I'm prepping. I took the longer one and I figured we'll make a, a new one. And I noticed they actually brazed the, these two lines together. And this is a fatter line than uh, that one is. So <laughs> the plot thickens. It just keeps digging a hole, you know. That's what happens when the, the homemade stuff like this. The stuff that you think would just be normal is not. Uh, I'm going to go see if I have one of these fittings and not destroy this. Worst case, we'll go over to that dual that I got. But I'm, I'm thinking if I can get that flare out wide enough anyway, it should be able to hold. Uh, it's not going down the street. <laughs> I don't know if I would do it for that. And I don't know if I want to try dealing with uh, trying to do what they did, bracing that line together. Think that'll work? Is that about the same size as the one that was on there or a little smaller? Yeah, that one is definitely... Um, I'm going to drop it down a hair. And we'll give it a little more. Hopefully it won't split on us. So I'm going to just lower the block like that much. Let's try it again. You go too far, sometimes that outer ring will uh, just split. Just be gingerly about it. Alright. Yeah, I don't want to go any more than that. Well, I spared you some other shenanigans, but I think we are connected. Hopefully it does not leak there. But we're going to go find out. Alright, we got to come up with a reservoir. It had... Let's go find a can that was on there. It was this thing. I don't know if it was bolted to the... Probably it was bolted right there, huh? And just a line running down. Let's go open that up. I'd like to use it over if we can, but brake fluid usually has a way of really corroding the crap out of something. That's braised too. I guess as long as it doesn't leak. Let's go open that up. Yeah. We need a new pair of ice grips that has better teeth on it. Damn it, there it goes. I think we deformed it though. That is not a good sign when it came apart like that. Actually, it doesn't look terribly terrible. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna bring over to parts washer, clean it up a little bit, and maybe I can try to make that round again. 
Yeah, hit it with a wire wheel. It's got pinholes already in the side of it. Let's see if we can kind of make that a little bit more resemblance of what it was supposed to. It now has a built-in air vent. Let's look at the cap that was on there. He actually made a vent. He punched through the center of it. He brazed a piece of small tubing on it. And I'm sure that's got a hole down in the center too. And it comes out there. The amount of time that somebody spent on this is amazing. But now it's got pinholes kind of going in this way. So it's going to vent in that location. I don't think water, it, there's none that are low. So if this, even this gets water on it, I don't think it's going to come up over it and, and go in there. All right. Let's try to get that back on there. I don't know if there's any rust on the bottom. I guess we're going to go find out. Let's go gurgle some fluid in it. Hopefully it don't spill. Let's go for Brooke. We're going to have to bleed it anyway, so... That's about two-thirds of the way up. Let's crack um, a line. Let's go see if we can catch you. Let's go bleed it over here, see if we get some. Hopefully that's coming back all the way, like I said. I think so. Probably should have bench bled that, wouldn't it hurt? Let's, um... Yeah, see if we can take the barber right out of the end of it, so we get the brake fluid to piss through it. Like I said, it should gravity feed. At least out of the master. I have to shoot a little air down there, maybe to try to get it going. Nothing. There we go. Some fluid's going through. Don't want to mess up the paint. All right, let's um. Run that in, push it down, crack it, run it in, let the master fill up a little, push it down, yeah it's coming out the line right there, I saw it, right, let's get tighten some of this stuff up, and that's the one that's going to be questionable whether it can seal anyway, so. Oh, that one was tight. <laughs> That's not a good sign. We got a brake pedal though. Oh, we can get that to seal. Yeah, That's what I was afraid of. Getting better. Check the mass. It looks like the mass is dripping a little too. That might be just residual. All these homemade fittings all over. All right, I'm gonna go out, blow this off, and wipe it down, and we'll give it some pressure and we'll see where it is that is not having an issue. I have to I might have to do something better for that. And we got a brake pedal. I think somebody's doing a burnout. You hear it? Yeah. <laughs> we got a good brake pedal. Let's um jack it up, see if the wheels are locking up for us. Because I have no idea what's even in there for brakes. 
<laughs> yeah, they're they're not doing anything. Yeah, so. So I don't know if we can go check the other side. How's your dexterity? That's ah, gonna give her one of those. So the left side works, right side does not seem to. Let's um go pop that wheel off. I'm curious what's in there anyway. So it kind of looks like a Volkswagen set up with the center, but I know it's not Volkswagen. But yeah, let's get this wheel off. This, this tire leaks like a sieve anyway. We got to go fix that. Let's get that off, get the drum off, and we'll see what it looks like for uh, brakes. Hopefully this comes apart. I think sometimes you might need a puller for this setup. It goes on and captures that. Yeah, it's a taper fit. That tire's off, nuts off. I do not expect that drum to fall off, but let's go see what happens. Let's go give her a couple of... <laughs> yeah. We gotta come up with some kind of puller to tug on that. I don't know what I have. Let me go see. Look at my puller case. I'm like, this is an odd looking one. That would look like something like what it should do. Not it though. Too wide. I guess we could make something to fit that. Then I have, what about just like a regular puller? Can we get that? on there we need some kind of point there so it doesn't walk yeah i, I think i have another one too that you can you can hold pressure on the sides it's starting to rain now you think the chances are that's gonna work he's gonna pop off on us yeah it's if it was more squared off you know, like if the jaw was more like that, probably stand more, a better fighting chance. Here's the other one I was thinking of, but the paws on them are not the right way. I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, can we make something that fits in there, maybe? Hmm. I wonder if we can get, you know, the ones that you clamp on, the, the pullers that you, you, you clamp together. I don't know if there'll be enough room for us to get this behind it. Let's go look. Yeah, here's the stash that we're picking from. I was thinking maybe something like one of these. We need one like in the middle of those two. Isn't always a way, right? That's too small. The other thing I can think of is that one with the three claws on it. If we wrap like a big hose clamp or something around it. What's this one? Nah, same thing. It's too shallow. Just pop off. Actually, this one, if we had, there's like a cone that goes over the top of it and it, it holds the pressure in. I know that we have that though. This is just a, a hodgepodge of all crap I've found over the years. You don't see it, do you? Uh, all right back to the drawing board well i don't give this too much hope especially right here is where i have an issue i don't have the little tapering cone i put grease on it but i don't want to take out the threads let's just give her some timing it's everything <laughs> All right, let's wait for the compressor to pop off and slide that back, see what we got. Let's see, good. Bust it off the rest of the way. We're in. You know, that's going to be nice and light, right? There we go. Uh, yeah, there's the taper shaft I was talking about. So we want to look at that wheel cylinder and hopefully we could save it. Let's go hit the brakes and see if anything moves. Yeah. So both of them are froze. And the other side, I guess, is working, but 
This was the same. Doesn't this look like the same ones that were on the Dodge? The Plymouth, rather? Yeah. Let's, um... What do we got to do to get the brakes away from it? You just take these springs off. Get the brake shoes away. Maybe we'll unbolt it, put it over the band. See if we can punch the, um... Pistons out of it. Yeah, I'm gonna pop that brake line off. Hopefully that comes apart decent and The two bolts will get the wheel cylinder out of it and we'll work on it on the bench See if we can get it freed up. If not, we'll try to Possibly find something else. I don't think I don't know if we saved any of the parts from that other one I don't guess who watched it or not that red uh, 1930 Plymouth. It looks very similar to that So I tried getting that Brake line off. It's not having it. We're gonna we end up trashing that, and it does run behind. So I'm gonna try see if we can get the brake shoes away from it. Come on, baby. Spring off. Let's see if we can get the, just the brake shoes to sit away from the cylinder. We can get it, grab access to it. That side's good. Would this one do the same thing. Maybe we'll try working on it right where it is. If there's a fighting chance of even doing that. <laughs> no courage in there. So we're going to have to try to drive that out of there. Want to go see what it looks like inside? Let me go change that light out. It's starting to flicker. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why it doesn't want to move. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, see the brake line on the back. How cruddy that is. Like a stainless line, but the fitting is really kind of rotted right into it. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, take an air gun. We'll blow some of that powder out of the way. Clean up as much of that crap as we can. Let's get the light mount. Let me go get a little pick. We'll scrape at that. Yeah. I have a feeling it's got like. <laughs> this keeps going. Make it snow. Um, Cause it, it's got a taper to it. This I don't showing up. This is thinner than this side. So I would think that maybe everything's got to go drive out that direction. If at all. Let's take a quick peek at the other side. See how bad that side is. We need, what we really need is two wheel cylinders. But. It's not looking much better, huh? Alright, well, I'm gonna go pick at that for a little bit, see if we can get any kind of movement out of that. I think I left all the parts that came with the Plymouth with the Plymouth. Hmm. We also have that, um, I got that Ford pickup. I gotta go finish up, and that's brakes on that thing also that we gotta get into. They're all needing to be done. Alright, let me go work on that and see if anything, I can get anything to come out of there. Kind of doubting it though, huh? Yeah, give her a couple of hits, see if it by any chance will move. I don't even know if it's gonna be able to drive back that way neither though. It, it might have. I, the, I think the, the problem is the pistons are cast aluminum. I think they're gonna shatter. At some point. Yeah. Going somewhere. There we go. Did they survive? That's the thing. Yeah, little faith, right? Yeah, it's got two different sizes. I don't know. I think possibly. Again, it's just a mower. Not a mower. A tractor. It's not like it's going to be doing. Well, it might be doing 40 mile an hour down the road. <laughs> There's that piece. And what are we missing? That piston. I'm going to go clean everything up and uh, see if anything is salvageable. 
And then we gotta look in the bore, see what the bore looks like. At least it came out. As long as none of these are torn. This is what actually makes the seal. I'm gonna go push that brake pedal down and stop the fluid from running. Haven't honed it yet. Get an idea what we got going on there. It's looking pretty rusty though. The other side doesn't look too bad. The uh, the fatter of the two bores. Yeah, let me take that back. <laughs> Let's go grab a hone stone and we'll run that a little bit, clean it up, see how it does. The other components, the seals don't look terrible. The part that does the work is this edge right here. So pressure is pushing against it, fluids behind it, and it uses this lip has to seal against the cylinder. And actually as, as pressure hits it, it kind of wants to push outward, give a better seal. These should be clear enough to, they really don't, you know, they're just there for the, the support. They're not there to make a seal. And this just kind of keeps tension on them to push them apart a little bit. All right, let's go run that hone. Yeah, hopefully there's enough room for all of us to fit in there. I got a little cup on the floor with um, brake fluid in it. I'm just going to wet the stones. Wet your stones. Let's see if we can get in there. Yeah, I'm going to have to back off from that tension a little. You can adjust how much pressure is on it. Let's go see if that works. Any chance? You know, it's going back together with whatever it has anyway. But <laughs> I'm gonna work on that a little bit. Get the light in there. Well, if I backlight it, would that be better? Yeah, it's making it worse, huh? You can't see anything. So I'll keep working on that. See how I can get. It actually looks decent. Yeah, remember that the um, the seal is going to be in really about an inch and a quarter is where it's going to be sitting. It's not really going to be sitting out here. This is where the piston kind of lies. So we're in a little further. It doesn't look terrible. Let me take care of it a little bit. I'll bring you back. I ran that hone through both sides. And that's about the best it's going to get. Definitely has some staining on the outer edges, but... I must say it did improve a bit from what we started with, huh? All right, so I'm gonna reassemble that. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't know if we're gonna be able to bleed it though, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't give that bleeder much chance in uh, working its way out, but we'll see. Let's see how much air we can, see what kind of pedal we get, really. It's definitely better than it was before, huh? Yeah, no, no lube goes on there, unfortunately. You would think you would, but it's not going to work with the brake fluid. All right, we'll get those shoes flip back on, and we'll hit the pedal a couple of times and see if um, we get some movement out of it, hopefully. All right, I think the chances are it's going to self-bleed and push that air out of there. Somewhere to... Yeah, she's moving a little, but it's just got too much air. The other thing I could think of is like we, we let it back off and let that little diaphragm pop out and, and bleed some air out of there. I am going to throw a wrench in that bleeder just for shits and giggles and see if we get it to move. I am not giving it much hope. <laughs> but we are functioning. Kind of. I think I heard it. Or is that me? 
I'm going to work on that, see what I can come up with. If I hold this one still, the other one should move. Yeah, right. All right, let me see what we can get to do to get some of that air out. I got a six point wrench on that bleeder. Let's see. Think it broke off or you think it turned? Or you think it stripped? Uh -huh. I don't know. I think we might have gotten it. We gotta take it apart and clean it. There's a whole little hole in that bleeder. I'm actually kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah, let's get that out of there. Yeah. So that's got a hole through the center of it, and then it should be right there. It's all plugged up with crap. Let's hit that pedal, see if we get some fluid coming through it. Oh yeah, it shot out some mud, huh? <laughs> i push out all that crap that's in there. Fresh stuff down through. All right, I'm gonna go clean that bleeder up and put it back in. Yeah, see if that'll take a bleed now. Oh yeah, now she's moving, huh? Better bite on it. Here we go. Yeah. She feels pretty good. Let's block this one. And then the other side should go. So they'll work in tandem when the brake drum's back on. Good. <laughs> now we just gotta do it all over again on the other side. Just give it one last preload in. Yeah, it's like the air. Make sure my reservoir didn't go dry. Let's take a peek at that brake drum. Big ass roll of bearing in there, huh? And there's a the key. The, the uh, drum itself actually doesn't look too bad. I'm just gonna scuff that up a little bit. I'll put that back on there. Might wanna. This is where that bearing rolls on. I may wanna clean that up some too, huh? All right. Get that knocked out. Talk about throwing tools at it, huh? <laughs> All right. I did the hard part. Who wants to do this side? Only one problem. After hitting the brakes, <laughs> that one squeezed out and it's stuck in the outer position. So definitely has to go go in and get that one done. Second side always goes much easier because you know what to do. This one wasn't in as bad shape neither, so I was able to hone it out, clean it all up, and now this one's floating too. So hopefully the bleeder will pop free. And I got all this back together and probably should take care of that tire on the other side is uh, lasts about a day before it goes flat. Don't you hate when you get done buttoning everything up and running it back in with the impact gun and then you look down on the floor and the two springs that hold the brake shoes back towards the backing plate are sitting on the floor. <laughs> got one back in I guess. So, I wonder where the leak is in the tire. <laughs> with foam and I went to lunch. Yeah. yeah, I have a good indication where that's coming from, huh? They go pop that off the tire machine. I'd say rust was the culprit, whatever that is. And get it off of there. This is glue, strong stuff. I don't think it really matters if you put it on the rim or the tire. It just kind of fills in all the little voids, especially on old crappy stuff. I'm gonna keep an eye out for some like heavy snow tires, but for now, we'll just get this one back on there. This is, it's all dry right now, you can see the cracking. It's in the sidewalls. All right, let's get her mounted. 
I think it's time to start working our way out from the center. I think we'll put the uh, the giblet protector back on. Take care of the battery and the seat. Generally, I'm not one to complain very much, but yeah, we're two for two. <laughs> All right, you see what the problem is? I tried tightening the cable down on that, and the nuts just kind of fell right out of it. it work. Generally, they're supposed to be recessed from this side and then a little bit of a peen holding it in place. Not from this side. So as soon as you tighten it up, they just pull right out of there. There's nothing to hold them. They were close. I may try putting it together. Maybe like that. I don't know. Terminating it in that way. This just fell apart. It didn't even get tight at all. Oh my, this is the wrong type, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Recessed down there with a little bit of mass on top. <sighs> yeah, it seats a little falling apart. So we'll hit her with some glue. Slices probably wouldn't have hurt it, huh? Well, other than the exhaust leak, which I think is actually inside the heater box on the other side, when I watched the other videos, it was leaking when I picked it up. So internally on the heater box, it's going to need to be fixed. The cab I'm not going to put on right now until fall comes along. I think it'd probably be easier to use as it is right now. And we are just down to the fuel system. A Volkswagen setup has a electric shutoff and an electric choke which are these two right here. So just go double check, make sure they have power going to them. It has a, somebody put a manual uh, choke lever on it. So the electric part of it, I don't even think is set up. And then they have a, another one for the throttle. But let's see if we got power going to those and then we'll maybe get this carburetor off of here. We'll give her a little bit of love. So see that bottom one, that's uh, a fuel shut off. So it won't idle, it won't do pretty much anything. So it'll be this wire. Let's go turn the key on. I do not see power. Yeah, I do not see power going to it. It should be coming off the coil. Where's that going to? Right there, yeah. That should be the hot side of the coil. Let me make sure my light is working correct. Always test your light. Let's try that again. Now oh, there it is. All right, so now we should have power, yeah. Okay, and then, when we go to unplug that, that should hear a click. There it is. All right. So it's working. Let's turn the key off. And let's get that carb right out of there. We'll give it a good once over. And we possibly, I'd like to make a gas pedal for it. This does not have a governor set up on it. And a governor should be like, yeah, that's a good example. Uh, cruise control in your car. You know, you set your car at 60 miles an hour and the gas pedal kind of changes as the load on it changes. So that's kind of the same idea. Not so much with this tractor, but if you're running like a PTO with a rototiller or something on it, no matter what the load is, you want it to adjust to it. The same say if it had a mower deck on it and you go into, you know, some high grass, you want the tractor if you set the throttle up for say 3000 RPMs, you want it to try to maintain that RPM no matter what. And that could be anywhere from just a little bit uh, on the gas to full throttle. 
So I do have one. Some, a lot of these engines were used also like in commercial units too. It could be like for a pressure washer or a generator or whatnot. And they had governor setups for them. We could always make one for it. I'm not running anything other than probably just pushing this plow and running it around at car shows. So I'm not that concerned, but I would like a gas pedal just so you can kind of like shift it through the gears and, you know, change the load as you're, you know, maybe pushing up against dirt, you have the capacity to floor it and then let off instead of trying to use this lever, which is the only thing that's set up right now. This is the throttle, you know, that's idle and that's full throttle. Yeah. It just doesn't really cut it that good. Anyway, getting ahead of ourselves. Let's get the carburetor off of there, give her a good cleaning and uh, figure out what we want to do from there. All right, let's go crack her open. First, we'll piss some of the gas out of it. I wonder if they actually have any part of the choke in there since they have it hooked up to a cable. There's a, a coil in here that when you put power to it, it heats up over time and then it changes position and that's what turns the, the choke off. And then it has a, a spring that returns it. Let's go start operating on her. It's still there, so that would heat up, and uh, this is like a rheostat behind it. It would heat up, and it would just rotate the uh, the choke. Uh, let's get the body of it off. The other thing too, there's a let's call it an accelerator pump. Let's get the spring out of there. There's an accelerator pump that, when you hit the gas, the uh, vacuum actually kind of goes low for a second until it catches up and it does not get as much fuel plus it also helps when that happens to be a little actually on a little rich side of fuel so the carburetor has accelerator pump that squirts raw fuel right down the throat of the carb and generally on these old VW carbs especially if it's been running any kind of modern fuel with ethanol on it, the diaphragm turns into a brick and no longer wants to function. So I would suspect that might be an issue too. Hopefully I have one. I should. As far as the VW stuff is concerned, I, tr I try to keep that stuff on hand. Alright, we should be able to crack that open. Crap is in here. Yeah, there's a little bit of dirt down there, but not terrible. I can see it. Yeah, not bad. All right, that accelerator pump is in here. Let's get. Uh, I might be able to get this one hand here. There's that shut off I was talking about and it just blocks off these ports going right through with a plunger internally on it all right so we need a little baby screwdriver hold on one second See what that diaphragm looks like. It actually feels pretty good. Nice. One of the things that's so long it didn't have ethanol fuel in it yet. Yeah. That one actually seems really decent. It's got a bunch of crap in there though. Look at all the dirt that was sitting in there. Alright, so we have a air fuel mix over here. Aww. The idle speed, I think on this carburetor is uh, done by right here. Uh, there's like a hammer setup that is missing. And we need 
feed ourselves a we're gonna get that last one out. Alright. That's not normal neither. That looks like somebody kind of boogered that together. And another jet. And looks like it's got some crap sitting on it too. So we're gonna go take this whole thing, we'll throw it in an ultrasonic cleaner. And we'll let it get whooshed. You got one more up here. We'll put it back together. See if I got a carb kit for it, like I said. And I think we can uh, probably purge. We'll look in that gas tank. And hopefully we can purge the fuel that's in there out of there. Yeah. Alright. We'll go soak that. See if the base gasket will come off. Huh. Don't rip. There you go. Get off of there. All right, that can get washed. Uh, that can all get cleaned. Oh, we got another, another little diaphragm up in here that um, works this. We are not actually even all that concerned about that neither. Let's go pop that out. I'm gonna work on that. Yeah, I'll get that out of the way. Well, that's the last piece. It just has to come out. It looks like it's got a issue down below there. I know you wanted to see it. I got the center of that out of there, and it just allows that to come out. Now it's bath time. Now let's see if we get a urine sample out of her. Doctor's orders. Oh yeah. Definitely needs to drink more water. Another bowl. Oh, sure. Stick that in the neighbor's car when they're not looking. So we really don't need the hand throttle if we get a foot throttle set up on it. So that's this lever and it's this black cable coming through. It has a bunch of linkages on it. I wonder if we could run a cable down if I could find something we could use for maybe like a pedal that we kind of stomp on straight down. Somewhere in this area is the only area we have to work with. Again, that's going to be our brake, our clutch rather, and then the throttle on this side. Hmm. I'm going to look at my stash. You can kind of come up with anything that, um, I don't think, like a VW bus gas pedal might be good because it has a, a bracket that you can bolt down. How about, as I'm looking around, a stainless hinge. Work with that. To start, right? Yeah, so figure maybe somewhere around here be good for the gas pedal. Maybe we could run like a um, a rod. So we have to pull on cable when this goes down. So I don't know if we come out with a rod here and cable that expands. How else can we do that? That's really about it, right? So we got this 
jacket will probably leave in place and maybe we'll try to run a new cable through it if we got room. And I grabbed some, a stash of different things. Maybe we can use uh, this one. On the end, that's on the uh, carburetor. It has a barrel that tightens down to just raw cable. It does not need to have any kind of end on it. So I don't know if we need that or not. Hopefully that'll be long enough. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna kind of jump ahead guys and work on this and I'll bring you back because we're getting really long in the tooth and I'm running out of time to get this video up. So let me uh, see if I can whittle out and I'll uh, bring you back. Look at that throttle all set up on the floor. I'll show you that in a little while. Went back to putting the car back together, dumped some fuel in it, and just checking the accelerator pump. So I should just, right out of that, I should get a, a P stream. It should mark its territory, right? So, <laughs> that is no good. We got a leak right there, which is common. That body uh, gets warped. I gotta go take that off sand it flat put it on a table kind of sand it flat and get it to seat that's why you check it before you finish putting it together so close i took it sanded that flat and we're getting better a good shot and we're not leaking a good pea stream no bog for us all right we get that finished Put it back on the, on the engine. All right, some cars have a, a foot for gas pedal. I got a stainless steel hinge. That should do it. Ran some uh, brake line and ran the cable through that and then just mounted that in a couple of places. So I used the original jacket that was there, came out of that with steel cable, um, brake line. Uh, these are brackets for the fan assembly where the cables go through that. So I just grabbed them, kind of molded them into what we needed. And then that, that big section is still behind here. And that's it. That's all you need. I threw some uh, lube in there. I may want to try to go back and get something a little bit greater than just like motor oil. So maybe a little thicker, like a grease or something. But I worked out my foot. And that's our gas pedal. I left the choke disconnected. I, I went with the factory setup. We'll see if we need be, we'll put this back on. I want to see how it is just with its regular setup. And uh, just like a Volkswagen would have instead of all this. If it's an issue, I'll put it back the way he had it. He may have had it that way because of having the manual throttle. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Let's go throw some gas in it. Throw some hoses back on it. And see what we get. Oh yeah, and the name of it. Reason why I guess it's green in color on the outside. It used to say sweet pea on top. Well the tractor's name is sweet pea. <laughs> Popeye. I don't have the idle speed and the air fuel mix adjusted either one. See what we get. I did uh, prime the car but I filled it so. Try our gas pedal. That's pretty good. So it'll warm up so that the choke comes off. Should be about, about a minute or two. The fuel line's leaking a little bit. Dead. I wonder if I'm not getting any fuel. That would have been about amount of time that it would have taken to use up what was in the float ball. Mm, I put, eh. The other part too is who knows as far as the, the uh, I put about a gallon in it. That's about what we took out of it. So let's um, put you back in the stand. We'll try firing it up without priming it. 
Let's just see if uh, we choke it, if it'll go. Stick my hand in there though, you gotta get between the belt. It's right down there. I'll try it. Safety third. Put it out with it a little. Yeah, fuel line's leaking. Timing's off, which could be. That's why it's revving so high too, maybe on the timing. Gonna die. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes. We'll let it warm up, and we'll see what we can do about dialing it in. I like to try to maybe we'll, while it's warming up, we'll try to pop it in here. Drive it back and forward just a little bit, see how, how things operate. me a little bit. It sounds like it's off. I'll hang a light on it later, but I think it's got to get rotated this way a little. Let's see if it's loose. Nope. Should be right about there. Nope, too much.
pretty good. At some point, I need to throw a set of points and get a condenser in it too, but uh, I think we can go hang a light on it. I'll, I'll see what we got. That's pretty close to what it should be, though. That's why the idle was so high. They, they actually took the thumb screw out of it. They were trying to get it to idle lower, and it wouldn't go there, but it's because of, it was because of timing. I have a feeling they might have to distribute or index um, possibly incorrect, I'm not sure of that. It seems like it, it should be one this way. That would be with the uh, gear in the bottom. The gear in the bottom can be put in it like every uh, every 20 degrees or so you, you can change it. I don't have a timing light here. I shut it off. See how she fires back up. I think I have to hit the gas pedal. The idle's high enough to not kill it when you run the hydraulics. That's good. Sometimes you can stall it. On my stand. <laughs> Headlights? Is that it? She's alive! I gotta get an air cleaner for it. I think they didn't have an air cleaner on it also because they had the choke cable going up with it where it sits. That and this is in a way for a regular Volkswagen one. I got a little foam one over there. I don't know if it's gonna be good enough. Yeah, it's not gonna be big enough. Wipers. They'll work when that's back on. It even homes itself. Heat. Feels pretty good. The frost. Yeah, we're just going to have to make a heater box for the other side, I think. But while there's no cab on it, I think we're good. Yeehaw! Neat. Well, I'm going to we'll give her a once-over real quick. And uh, you know what's next, right?
try a second gear run. I'm afraid for third to lock up. Let's lock him up. <laughs> Definitely need beefier tires and chains. I could tell it had chains on it once before. Let's see what's got my turning radius. All the way. Go for first gear. Yeah, that's bad. Third. Good <laughs> button, your eyes. I did probably have a top speed of about 30 and third, which is Way too fast for something with no suspension. I'm in third gear right now. It's like on pavement to push dirt off. Let's just try dropping the blade first gear on uh, where the hard pack is. The other stuff is all dug up, so it's soft. We don't have any snow to run it on, but angle it all the way. Drop her down. Definitely go. Burning off all the oil. Yeah, she's a digger. <laughs> okay, I think it's more set up for snow than it is dirt, you know, but that's definitely, if it, if it can move dirt, it can move snow, right?
making a mess and just cut it out. Cool machine, it really works well. Just needs to dialing in yet, I can kind of set the timing up. I can do that statically. I can take a, uh, a test light while well, it's off and find where the points are breaking and tweak that in. Still burning off all the crap that's in it. Brakes seem like they work fine. Um, definitely needs chains. They, it'll dig a hole. It's not a posi rear, so like one, one slip it just digs. But again, this is made for snow, not gravel and dirt. And that's you know, pretty much what this stuff is. So. Nothing's fishing out of it. I got an air cleaner set up for it. Again, that cable's in the way, so I'll try to find something for that. Yeah, nothing's pissing out. The controls work. Got a generator light. Flickering oil light flickering a little. Probably clean that again. We grab that, that'll go out. But that's all that sludgy crap that's in there. Neat. Can't wait till we get some snow. I shouldn't say that. In about nine months, maybe. <laughs> but for now, I think we're just gonna uh, use it for the shows. I'm not gonna put the cab on it, like I said. I'm gonna leave it that way for the summer. And then when the winter time comes around again, we'll play with it and um, see what it actually does in, in snow with some chains on it. Or nice, nice knobby tires I'll look for. All right, guys. I think I, I'm done playing. I'm glad all of you kind of hanging out with me and just kind of going through all this weird stuff like this and, and having some fun and just. Whoever built it did an awesome job. They really put a lot of time and effort into it. It really came out awesome. All right, guys. That, I'm going to go sign off. It's getting late. I got to go clean up the mess I made over here and uh, pretend like it ever happened. <laughs> so, with that, I'm going to go sign off and uh, we'll play with something else fairly soon. I got a whole bunch of other stuff waiting to turn. So, for this one, I think we're going to go call it. All right, guys. With that, I'll see you. Later.